But beyond the apology, then what next? This is what it reads. Ghana Football Association wishes to express its sincere apologies to the Ghana, that's the Ghanaian people, of the good people of Ghana for the Black Stars' inability to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations. We understand the disappointment and frustration this failure has caused, and we share in the pain and sadness of our beloved fans. We acknowledge that the team's performance did not meet the high expectations of the nation, and for that, we are truly sorry. We would like to take this opportunity to express our heartfelt gr gratitude to all our loyal football fans for their unwavering support and encouragement throughout the qualifying campaign. Sadiq Adams uh, is joining me right now. And let's go back. Let's go back to that um, part of the statement. Sadiq, it's good to have you join us here on Ghana tonight. It's one of the very well acknowledged football that's the sports journalist in this country. Sadiq, the second part of that statement that, that talks about the understanding. The GFA says they understand the disappointment and frustration this failure of the Black Stars has caused us. And they actually share in our pain and, and our sadness. Is that gratifying for you? Not really. Um, clearly something that has been forced. Uh, you can see from the tone of the message and um, the way and manner the statement has been released testifies to the fact that that's the typical Ghana Football Association, something that has been forced. The team got eliminated two weeks ago, and you can see from the demeanor and posture of the association uh, emanating from the fact that there is no accountability, nothing has forced them quite so far to accept responsibility as always. And because of the fact that there will not be any accountability on their part, uh, this is something that a lot of sports journalists have issued clarion call and too much pressure on them. Their criticisms have been very harsh and there is no other escape than to do this, but I don't think that this is from a very genuine position. And now we're hearing that the management committee of Black Stars has also been dissolved and the, the management members we're going to put on the screen shortly. <laughs> Does this in any way convince you that this is going to be a major turning point decision for the fortunes of the Black Stars? It's, it's uh, very trifling, very insignificant in the sense that the management committee that has supposedly been dissolved has only existed in name, uh, to be very honest. Three of the committee members have resigned uh, for about a year or two ago. Colonel Damwa has resigned, Alaji Buza has resigned, Sami Kofo has been absent from the management committee for two years. So, uh, Kwesi Ajeman, who is the head of the tourism, and uh, Mark Abdo have also been absent. So it's a committee that has existed only in name. It's a phantom one, and so there is nothing that supposes that this is a dissolution supposed to cause some uh, seismic shifts in the affairs of the national team. They have not been there. So, except for people who are not well versed in these affairs, they are only trying to uh, put some webs, webs of comfort for the fans. But there has never been a management committee of the Black Stars in the last year or so, as far as I know. Well, because of the names I'm seeing there, and it's not surprising you describe this as, as, a, as a, an insignificant decision, a whitewash. What if you can describe it? Because, yes, Samir Osel Kufu, we see him all around the world doing his business. Kenel Damwa, we know what he's been through, and so he's minding his business. Al Haji Gruza, you see, has also stepped aside. Kwesi Ajiman, is he, is he has a whole tourism authority to manage. And exactly. Then, and, and then Makado. So he has, he, has, he has been absent in the, in the state for. He's been in the United States for quite some time and, now. And he's, he's the chairman of the, of the committee, the Black Stars so you, you, committee? You clearly can see the deliberate attempt to uh, hoodwink people into thinking that something has been done. It, it is a clear, reckless decision that has led us to this point. There has never been a management committee following the team against Sudan. The two of them were in the United States. Uh, there was no management committee following the team in those two crucial games. So this is not what's supposed to be dissolved. I, we have called for the entire dissolution of the FA. We have called for the disbandment of the team. We have called for the dissolution and overhaul of the technical team uh, in principle. These are the very key components uh, that will trigger some sort of change 
uh, that would be very significant. But the committee that has been dissolved is only on paper. They have not existed in, in I, substance. I see. So for you, the, 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 the medicine to the sickness of our football in this country is for Keto Kriko and his cohort to go. Absolutely. They have changed seven coaches in the last six years. They have changed management. They have changed players. Nothing significant has happened. So who do you think clearly is a problem? Hmm. How about the coach? I mean, he's keeping his job in the midst of all this. Then we as well stay focused and just allow them to do what they want to. Because if, if the changes have not happened with the managerial and all the statements that have been released, then there's a series of apologies. Nothing transformative has happened. Why do you think that we should believe them this time? I, I, I do not believe in it until I see a complete dissolution of the technical team, the, the Ghana Football Association, Executive Council, know what I have seen that they want to call for a stakeholder engagement. That, that's quite in the right place. But who are the stakeholders of Ghana football? They have been on the bandwagon that football belongs to the football people. So I don't know who the other stakeholders are and why do they have to wait until we have sunk deeply into the abyss to invite stakeholders for to what extent and for what purpose? Well, they, they say that's going to be on the 28th. I mean, they say journalists are invited. I'm sure you'll go. Well, let's see. <laughs> Some hold the view that um, whatever happens to our national teams at a particular point in time is a reflection of the state of affairs in the country. Do you agree with that? Well, there, it's difficult to separate because the Ghana Football Association itself is under the Ministry of Events, Sports and the National Sports Authority, who are the custodians or the representatives of the people. So you cannot separate or disassociate the failure of the national team. This is the first time in the last two decades, 20 years, and anywhere else in this world, this would have been a disaster and a very complete level of embarrassment. But it's kind of a country that um, has fallen to a point where there are no standards, so you don't expect too much, but you, you do not. It will be very difficult for me to disassociate the failure in that regard, in that sector, from what we are experiencing as a country. So, apology not enough. GFA, the entire GFA must, must be dissolved. And then what next? Well, there are some jurisdictions where the entire board have resigned. That is what we want to see, so that people are taking full responsibility. The back stops with the boss. So the people being dissolved and the committees being dissolved are very insignificant, let me emphasize. Sadiq, I do appreciate your time joining us on this matter. And uh, we'll see how the 28th, uh, your retreat will, will, will go. That's, uh, that's if you're going to honor that invitation. But thank you. Thank you very much for joining us, as always. Always. Thank you. Great. Sadiq Adams is a celebrated sports journalist in this country. And on that rather sad note, we want to say thank you. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. On behalf of the rest of the team, we do appreciate your company. Join us same time tomorrow for another conversation. We we'll remain your election command center. Join the New Day team tomorrow morning and also the Sunrise team, Elena Piampofo and Johnny Hughes tomorrow morning on 3FM 92.7. I am Alfred Kansi. Have a good night.